inequality and wealth are shaping up to be signature issues in the 2020 election and certainly in the Democratic primaries. Private equity is a lightning rod. Already the banking industry is under major scrutiny. What happens when the progressives turn their attention on your industry? Well, I think if people really understand what private equity is, uh, anyone would like it, from whether you're a Democrat or a Republican. Like my own firm tracks job creation. We've added or created over 43,000 jobs, net of any job losses. We pay way more than the national average. So I think if you actually look at good private equity, it's just business building, and it's actually very socially positive. So you, in addition to running New Mountain, are chairman of the American Investment Council. This is effectively the trade organization or lobby group for the private equity industry. Um, what is the AIC's strategy for fending off political attacks? Well, part of it is just, again, trying to let people understand more what private equity is. Most people don't know a private equity from a hedge fund. Hedge funds trade stock. Private equity, we actually own, build, and control companies for multiple years. It's a form of business where you own and manage entire businesses. Do you think the industry has an image problem? I think the image, yeah, I think it does. I think it would be a much, much better image. And I still worry about, you know, there's other people's money where Danny DeVito goes in and sells the desk or the Manchurian Candidate movie was remade and instead of North Korea brainwashing the assassin, it was a private equity firm in Washington, D.C. brainwashing the assassin. So I think our image could be much, much better. How do you fix that? I think, again, by getting the facts out, by letting well, people not actually... All, not all the facts are favorable, right? Well... I mean, we could... I could mention... Toys R Us, I could mention right. Manor Care, I could mention Payless, I could mention Jim Bree, I could mention Philadelphia Energy Solutions. These are all private equity deals where leverage hastened the decline into bankruptcy. Well, you know, there are 5,000 private equity firms that own 30,000 companies that have invested, I think, close to $5 trillion into Main Street companies over the last five or 10 years. So out of 30,000 companies, particularly in retail, where so many retailers in the mall are being destroyed, whether they were levered or not. You could always find some bad stories. But again, for my own firm, where I can track things in full, uh, over 43,000 jobs created net of losses, higher than normal wages, 4.6 billion of R&D software and CapEx, never a bankruptcy, never missed an interest payment, and I'm just one firm. So you can always find bad stories out of 30,000 companies, and those are the ones that get the headlines because we do have an image problem. But I think the overall reality is very positive. Is there a sense of urgency among buyout executives that if you don't address this image problem, something's going to happen in the 2020 well, election or in yeah. the aftermath, depending, of course, on who gets elected. I, I, you know, I don't, think, I, think, I don't think it's a sense of urgency. I, for example, this, these statistics that I'm giving you about my own firm, we started to track in 2008 after Lehman Brothers went down, and we publish a social dashboard every year on our website and just update it. So I felt you know, a particular need to do it when Lehman was down there, so much anger about business, Wall Street, private equity. I don't think it's gotten worse. I just think it's important for any business to be able, private equity or public equity, to explain why what you're doing is a good thing. So uh, I think what my firm does is good. I think there are 5,000 firms, uh, and overall what we do is good, and I think it's important to explain it. As you point out, New Mountain is different from some other private equity firms. Uh, you talked about never having missed an, or defaulted on an interest payment, never right? You haven't had payment. a bankruptcy. Yeah, right. You use less leverage than other firms do. Yeah. I would say that that's tantamount to being more conservative, and you emphasize growth over financial engineering. That being the case, look at the environment. Right? Private equity firms, or excuse me, private equity deals are trading at almost 12 times EBITDA, right? This in an industry that swore it would never pay more than 10 times. How do you find anything to buy? Yeah, well, my own firm's ha having a good time of it. Some of the deals you talk about that are high multiple deals are, for example, software companies, very fast growing software, where the public company comparables trade at or above what private equity's paying. Uh, my own firm tries to buy more growth at a reasonable price. So we've paid on average under 10 times EBITD for everything we've bought in the last four or five years. Uh, you know, even though we're selling them for above 10 times EBIT. So again, there are 5,000 firms owning 30,000 companies. Every firm has its own strategy. It's a form of business, not a form of finance. It's not an index. It's a, it's a way to do business where you don't have 90-day reporting. You can think over multi-year the way a family business can think. 
anyone in financial markets today is aware of the shift from public to private. Certainly yeah. private equity has yeah. benefited along the way, an infusion of capital. Is there too much capital chasing too few deals? Well, it ha that hasn't shown up yet because the returns for private equity, for example, have been very strong. They've outperformed the, you know, the public indexes. And uh, there's been multiple periods where public equity has been negative for five years in a row. There's been no periods, according to Hamilton Lane, where private equity's had negative returns. So again, you know, you're empowered with a fund of money and you're just doing it privately instead of publicly, but what you do is dependent on the skill and the business skill of the general partner of the firm. So if you have good general partners, and more and more what's really happening is more and more of the very best operating managers are leaving public companies where they're under 90-day pressure, joining private equity where they can think in multi-year periods privately, and so you're seeing some of the very best operating managers the move to private equity. Quarterly reporting, but, well, but Steve, yeah, just actually, a very rational way to own a company privately for multiple years. I want to ask you about this. One of the issues that you've decided to focus on personally, yeah. and it, there's a political aspect to this as well, of course, is the cost of college tuition. Yeah. Why is that? Well, I've been very involved in education reform for over 25 years. Outside of business, my chief charity is in education reform. I'm chair of Harvard's public education policy group. I've set up after school centers 25 years ago that still run. And college, the cost of college, whatever party you're in, is just one of the major problems in the nation. One and a half trillion dollars of student debt. And there are ways to help improve the problem. And your not-for-profit is helping people to earn college credits effectively for nothing? Yeah, well, we've set up a charity, What's which called it's called modernstates.org. Okay. I ask people to, if you want to help your family member or a friend or your employee save money, go to modernstates.org. We offer great courses for free online, and there's a way to get credit through the CLEP test. So it sounds, and I've had a look at it, by all accounts, a really interesting program and yeah. a way for people to gain access to college level education at a much lower price. How do, do we deal with the root problem and not the symptom? The root problem is college is simply too expensive and the rate of tuition inflation is simply out of control. I don't have an answer for the entire university system. What I wanted well, to... Let me ask you this, yeah. should public universities be free effectively? Uh, th that's not an issue I have an answer for because obviously it costs a lot of money to deliver in classroom education and it's, if it's free to the student, the taxpayer is paying for it. So it's going to be a cost either way. What I'm doing is something different at modernstates.org. It's not all that expensive to get a great professor to teach an online course once and let everyone in the world then use it. So we've created, we've hired some of the very best professors in the country to teach 32 of the most fundamental courses with free textbooks. And there is a path to credit through the CLEP exam from the College Board. 130,000 people have started to use this program in the last year or so.